there outside of the vote that finally did pass this veterans health care bill that John Stewart's been fighting with. He's hugging there with Rosie Torres. She started Burn Pit 360, an organization, after her husband got sick in Iraq, of course, working those burn pits, which is, of course, is the whole part about this entire fight that has been happening between Republican senators and our, uh, our veterans that served, our sick, specifically our sick veterans that served. Uh, it's been a week's worth of fights, Sunday shows, uh, interviews out of cars, standing, protesting, sleeping on steps, uh, uh, confronting folks and asking them, what is it you really want from this? Well, let's go to some of those things that happened because it was a big fight. Let's watch. This is an embarrassment to the Senate, to the country, to the founders and all that they profess to hold dear. And if this is America first, then America is f Thank you. Thank you. The passion was always there and he also came with tons and tons of facts, which had many Republicans reeling before they even got to this point. Because if you, in case you forgot, they voted for this back in June, Republicans did, and then switched the vote because they're upset about something else. We've gone into those details, but I wanna tell you guys what it is they were thinking right before they decided to flip back again to supporting Americans. Senate Republicans beforehand, before this actually went down, they're looking for a way to quietly end this standoff over legislation to help veterans suffering from toxic exposure that has turned into a major distraction and put them on the defensive at a critical moment. Activists representing veterans are enraged after Republican lawmakers blocked $278 billion, billion dollar bill aimed at helping veterans suffering from health ailments because of their exposure to toxins. They've staged a sit-in at the protests at the Capitol steps since Thursday to draw attention to Republican opposition. Now, these Republicans concede that the standoff is not a good look for them three months before a crucial election and that they're taking most of the blame for the stalled bill. Pause, Jessica. This always frustrates me because this could be written by someone who is in support of normalcy, which would be supporting the veterans that gave their lives and their health for things like this. But the wording on that last part again, on that last part of that graphic says, they they can see that the standoff is not a good look for them three months before a crucial election. And we'll write that and see that as a normal thing for our politicians to say out loud and not be seen as bad guys. That's bad guy behavior. We're only doing this. For citizens of our country, specifically veterans, because it's gonna look bad as midterm elections come. It sounds like you care more about whether or not you have a chance to look decent in midterm elections than you do about legislating and helping the people who voted you into office. That's the very first problem with our political system. Before we go further, I want your thoughts on that. Yeah, absolutely. The reason that they're giving for for why this is a bad idea, they call it an accounting gimmick, right? When they interviewed Joni Erst about this. And the problem is, is they're talking about budget deficits as if they're an actual problem. This is about helping veterans. How often do we pass massive defense budgets every year, 705 billion in 2021, without even thinking about the budget deficit? And it's because they know that's not how it works. We don't have to take in more taxes than we spend because the federal government government is a currency issuer. As we increase our productivity as an economy, we can increase the monetary supply. They know this very well. And the reason that they're stalling this is because they care more about satisfying their lobbyists than they do about caring for the people in their district. And usually they win these arguments in these public debates when it comes to who they support. You know, We're a fiscally responsible Republicans. We're for the military, we're for the boys in blue. Except when they're not for the boys in blue and they're not for the military <laughs> and they're not for the general public. These populists that like to say that they are, it always shows its true colors. But the thing is, usually most people don't see it. I guess they missed the boat on this one. They miscalculated whether or not Jon Stewart and these veterans were actually gonna be loud enough to give their point of view and people actually believe them over the liars. Maybe everything is catching up to them as far as what people see as the truth. I mean, that's just me being optimistic, I don't think so. One of those folks, I wanna go to him because he was talking a lot and he still voted against it. There was 11 Republicans that still voted against this in the Senate. Pat Toomey was one of them. Let's remember what he was saying. I have to say we are witnessing a very old Washington trick playing out on what might be an unprecedented scale. And what is that trick? That trick is you take a very sympathetic group of Americans, it could be children with rare diseases, it could be victims of crime, it could be veterans who are suffering an illness after having been exposed to toxic chemicals while serving our country. You take this sympathetic group, craft legislation to address 
their problems, and then sneak in something that's completely unrelated, that could never pass on its own, and dare anyone to stand up and say a word about that. Because we all know, if you raise the concern about the unrelated provision, people in this chamber and outside, they will uh, uh, enlist some pseudo-celebrities. They will get their accomplices in the media to propagate the dishonest charge that, oh, those mean Republicans don't care about those sympathetic victims. That's what's been going on here. So uh, what Pat Toomey did there was describe what's happening, but then write it off as something fake. What's actually happening, yeah, and did happen, was Republicans were positioning themselves against veterans and regular Americans and acting like it was something else. But he continued down that same road, but they still lost it anyway because people finally saw the light. I hope this continues on. Uh, Pat Toomey can uh, sit there and, and stay with the stance and die on that hill of, yeah, there was something else happening that I didn't want to have happen because there was legislation actually passing to help other Americans. We're gonna get to that when we talk about Joe Manchin, but I'm gonna blame it and punish veterans instead. Didn't work, Pat, try next time. And actually, let's remember his name before we go on to the next and the next and the next. Rand Paul is definitely getting remembered for the things that he said hateful about this entire thing as well too. But as you mentioned, Jessica, we're quick to pass other kinds of legislation, except when it actually helps people.